guys to ILW Pod. I'm your host, Justin Wright. Today, I am here with Vince. How are you doing, man? Real good, man. How are you? Doing great. Uh, glad to have you on the show, uh, as we was talking about a little bit before we got on here. Um, before we get started, you want to throw out any, you know, Instagram handles, Facebook handles, any of that stuff so they know where to find you? Yeah, yeah. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, if you search up Vince Valor, you can find just about anything. Um, I have a Pro Wrestling Tees tour. I'm all over social media. Gotcha. Guys, stay active on there as much as I can. Uh, is there any events or anything you got coming up that you want to, you know, throw a little shout out for? Oh, I'm always busy. I'm, I got events about every weekend. Uh, so we're recording when is this the Thursday now? So tomorrow night I'll be at Excite Wrestling in Vestal, New York. Uh, Saturday I'll be at Neo Pro Wrestling in Niagara Falls, Ontario. That's a special event we're doing. We're doing a uh, tribute show memorial event for my trainer Jesse Scott, uh, JT Play. He passed away earlier this year, so we're doing a memorial show for him. Nice. And I'm, uh, if you follow me on social media, I try to post all my upcoming events. I'm on the road about every weekend. Cool, cool. Um, I guess we'll just dive into some questions. Um, you know, the generic first question is always, you know, wh when did you know you wanted to become a pro wrestler? Uh, when did I know I wanted to become a pro wrestler? Once I, be once I realized that it was a possibility. Um, because you, you watch it your whole life, you become a fan of it, but you never really know, like, how do those guys get into it? But, like, once I became of age, I started when I was 17 years old wrestling. Um, so straight out of high school, I, I jumped right into wrestling. But, like, so we, my friend and I, Matt Milan, we kind of uh, researched and found a school in Rochester, New York that we could train at. And we realized, oh, like, this is a possibility. And I didn't really know too much about independent wrestling until, like, I started to get into it. All I, all I knew was was WWE at the time or WCW or anything I grew up on. And so, like, realizing that independent wrestling was a local thing, it opened a whole new world to me. So, I kind of, it's kind of screwed from there. Nice. Um, how did you get, like, your start and where did you start training at? Um, I started training in Rochester, New York through Upstate Pro Wrestling. Uh, I spent a little bit of time there. From there, I moved to uh, a place close to the home to me, which was Niagara Falls, Ontario. I trained at the Neo Pro Wrestling Dojo under Tiberius King. Um, started training then and got a, got a lot of my experience earlier on in Canada. Uh, but I was close enough to the border where I was able to wrestle in the, the Buffalo Rochester area as well as get my reps in uh, all across Ontario too. Nice. Um I, I didn't know you was from Rochester, so, so that's interesting. No, no, Did not you... from Rochester. I'm from Niagara no. Falls. I, I just trained in Rochester. So, like, for the longest time, we didn't have a school in Buffalo. We didn't have a school in Buffalo until uh, about 2014, I believe. So the closest area to train was Rochester. So a lot of the local guys around here trained in Rochester. Uh, some a little bit further, but then I found the place in Canada. So I kind of put my time between both. Okay, my bad. Um what, like, would you say, like, any guys like Brody Lee or any of those guys kind of inspired you at all? Yeah, yeah. He popped his head in and out at the place in Rochester. Uh, he was local and homegrown there. So, it was like, he was he was everyone's idea of success in the Rochester area. Win for him was win for all of us. Uh, everyone kind of lived vicariously through his accomplishments and was proud of him and everything that he achieved. So, he meant a lot to the Rochester and Buffalo area. Do you have a good Brody story? Uh, I didn't get so like around the time I started was around the time that like, he was on his way up to WWE. So I didn't get to know him too well. I had a few interactions with him. I had a chance to, he came into the school in Buffalo, Grapplers Anonymous for a seminar once, uh, a couple of years before he passed. Um, but he, he, he was able to, that, that's probably the most I really got to know him was to sit and listen to some of his stories and listen to any advice he had. And he, he was, he was helpful for everybody in this area and he was helpful for, you know, a lot of the wrestlers coming up, so it was good to at least be able to meet him and interact with him somehow. Of course. Um, I was going through, like, your your cage match statistics online. I know I noticed you do, like, a, a variety of, like, tag team and single stuff. Um, what's What would you say the difference is between, like, working a single style versus a tag style? Uh, tag team style, I mean, you got to be responsible for more than just yourself. Uh, you, you kind of, if you, any good tag team, they'll treat themselves as the package deal. So, uh, if your partner messes up, it reflects on both of you. Your partner does good, it reflects on both of you. So, you kind of got to 
you kind of got to treat it as, all right, that's my tag team partner, both in and out of the ring. I think that's what makes any tag team successful. You can't really team with somebody that you really don't really get along with. So you kind of got to get to know each other on the road, hang out outside of wrestling, get to know, like, find that chemistry, find what matches well for both of you in order to be a successful tag team. Singles right. matches, you're only really responsible for yourself and for your opponent. Yeah. Which one would you say, like, do you prefer one or the other? I much rather prefer singles wrestling. I've, I've spent a lot of time in tag team wrestling. I've been in a lot of different tag teams throughout my career. Um, I've enjoyed everybody I've, I've been able to tag with. I've had a lot of experience with that. It's, it's it's given me a good appreciation for tag team wrestling. I feel that I can excel at it. I just prefer to be able to focus on myself. Okay. Um, as far as, like, wrestling, wrestling is always full of gimmicks or characters. Um well, how would you explain your character? Like, if you had to explain it in a nutshell. Um, I, I guess the best way to describe it, it, it it's just me. It turned up to 11. Uh, and, and that's the best way of describing, like, much, much of anybody's character. Like, it, it's just an extension of you, but to a different extreme. I mean, some people get behind, like, gimmicky characters and things like that. I just try to be, try to be me. And I don't, I don't try to put out too much of a phony version of myself. I try to... Make myself a relatable and engageable to an audience. Yeah. Um, you mentioned working in Canada. What what's it like up there versus you know working the states? Canada, it's a much different environment. I, I, the way I look at Canada, if you can't get uh, reps and experience in Canada, you're doing something wrong. There's wrestling every weekend, all weekend. Sometimes in the middle of the week. Uh, I've, like you, there's so many different companies to wrestle for in Canada. So if you're a new wrestler starting out, you get plenty of experience that way. Uh, but there, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of bad in Canada, but it's, it's a great place to wrestle. Everybody there that I've come across has treated me very well. The audience always treats me well. I, I love wrestling Canada. Some of the places I wrestle for, uh, Neo Pro Wrestling, Greek Town Wrestling, they, they treat me like family. I treat it like my home. It, it's 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 great to be able to be so close to the border where I can wrestle in both. Uh -huh. Both in Canada and stateside. Thanks. Um, I, I noticed online there is a, a new promotion popping up up there, Maple Leaf. Yeah, uh, uh, Maple Leaf Wrestling. It's uh, it's new. It's uh, I believe they're having their post show in October, uh, mm -hmm. October eighteenth, I believe nineteenth, something like that. Uh, Scott Demore was running it, I believe. Uh, from what I've seen, a lot of a lot of huge stars making their way there. Is there any chance we could see you pop up there? I'd love to. to. Um, I, I I'd love to make my way there someday. I mean, I'm I, I'll keep an eye out on what they have going on, and hopefully one day I can make my way there. Yeah. Um, I also noticed you've worked AEW Dark. What was it like working with you know Dark and John Silver? Oh, it was an interesting experience, man. It was it was really like a once in a lifetime thing. Uh it's always been a goal of mine to work for one of the major companies. And I had the chance to about two years ago. So it's, you, you get in those moments and like, it's something you like I've been wrestling for 14 years. And like, even in that moment, you still feel nervous of like, you want everything to be perfect. You want everything to be as good as it can be. And to be in that ring in that moment. And it was, it was cool to, you know, a lot of the audience there was, was familiar with my works. So I wrestled in Pittsburgh that night. So like, I've wrestled in Pittsburgh before, so a lot. Some of the audience that were there for AEW that night knew me. I had a good match with John Silver. It was a, it was a fun experience, and I've had other opportunities to go back and uh, be a part of the locker room and uh, do some extra work with them. So it's a, it's a good learning experience. So, like, is there a different process going into like doing extra work versus you know gearing up for a match, so to speak? Um, it's kind of you're you're there and. If they need you for something, they need you for something. You don't necessarily go there with the, you go there with the hope of getting a match, but it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you're just kind of there and you call the pound for whatever you need. Have you done any other like stuff for like any other promotions like that, like extra work or? I've been backstage for for, uh, for WWE doing extra work too. It's it's an experience. It's a, it's a chance to be able to learn to see how. Uh, these major companies are run. See, see how like the the ins and outs, and just, like you kind of just a fly on the wall for a lot of things, and you just kind of listen and you learn. And it's it's cool to be in that professional environment. Is 
is there a big difference, you know, backstage wise versus like an AEW and a WWE? Oh, uh, the, the, there's big differences. I mean, there's lots of different people, lots of different uh, office people, office workers, things like that. Uh, every company you go to is different. Every locker room you're part of is different. So there's differences no matter no matter where you go. Fair enough. Um, so like where where you've got the opportunities to to be at you know both of those as an extra or in a dark match or whatnot. Um, I'd assume it'd be a goal for you to get there, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I think anybody that, enter, that enters the pro wrestling business, their their goal like should be to make it to a major company one day. Um, if that happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I'm I'm happy with wrestling either way. Uh, but yeah, that's always the goal. Is there like, have you got any opportunities anywhere like the NWA or? Um, some of, not the top, you know, promotions, but just under. Um, I wrestled for GCW Game Changer Wrestling. Uh, I think it was about three weeks ago now. Uh, okay. it, was, it was great to have an opportunity there, and uh, yeah, hope to get more opportunities with them whenever they're back in town. Um, uh, what's work when? Uh, what's it like working with Brett? I've heard interesting uh experiences working with him. I uh, he's he was cool. It's it, it, he makes he makes his roster feel feel like family. Uh, it, was, it was a cool atmosphere to be around that locker room and uh, be around the boys. And Brett treated me very well. It's it, he, was, he was great towards me when he really didn't need to be. So it, it's good, and I hope to be able to uh, work with them more in the future. Okay. Um, something fun I usually like to ask you know you guys is there's always a bit debate on who would the Mount Rushmore be as far as pro wrestling. Who who do you think that you know that uh, four could be? Oh boy, um, I mean, you you kind of there's there's Mount Rushmore for different like aspects of the business. Like you can lo look at like who might be the best in ring performers. Guys like Shawn Michaels or Eddie Guerrero will be on that list. But there's also the Mount Rushmore of guys who have done much more for uh, exceeding in the business side of things. The, the guys that have made the most money for these companies. You look at the major stars, like like your Hogan's, your Austin's, your John Cena's, uh, things like that. Um, for me, somebody like John Cena belongs on there. Triple H belongs on there for everything that he's done for the for the WB for as long as he had. Uh, the Undertaker, the most legendary figure of all time, and is, as far as I'm concerned. Um, guys like that. So, I mean, it, it, it's hard to really narrow it down to four because it's everybody that's – Contributed so much to the business, it's hard to really narrow it down to just four that should belong on there. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier that you have a pro wrestling tees like store. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had guys on here um, unaware of how to like get get one started. How do, how do you go about, you know, working with somebody like that to get your, you know, merch out and to get your stuff out? Uh, I not even if you can say. It was I've, – I've, I've had it for so long. I've had it since, I believe, 2016, 2017-ish. And I think at that time they were running, like, a promotion where uh, it, it was just uh, send in your info, send in your bio, send in your email. And uh, if you get selected to be able to have a store, then it kind of just works from there. So, yeah, I was able to open up a store around that time, 2016, 2017, and uh, uploaded my shirts ever since then. Any, any new design I come out with. I have some exclusive ones on there. I have ones that I carry in stock. So it's it's a good chance to, you know, if I don't have something in stock at a show, the fans can go online and buy it, have all sizes, different styles. So, so it's good to have. Okay. Um, you know, another thing is like lately wrestling has been booming, not over here, not only here in the U.S., but um, overseas like the UK and stuff. Have you ever made a tour of anywhere outside of the States other than Canada? No, that's actually been a goal of mine too, is to do an international tour. So hopefully within the next year or so, I can try to make that happen. Uh, I'd love to wrestle overseas. There's a lot of big things going on in uh, different countries. And, you know, th th that's a goal of mine. Have you ever done, uh, excuse me, have you ever done anything like in Mexico, Lucha Libre or anything? Nothing like that. It's it's uh it's been on my mind. It's something I'd have always wanted to do. So hopefully within the hopefully while I'm still young I can uh I can make my way over and do those types of things. Okay. Um 
I guess just wrapping up, I always end on a word of advice to somebody um, who would like to be in your position or is working their way up. You got any advice for anybody trying to get in the game? You get out of this what you put it into it. If you if you only want to put in a little bit of effort, you're only going to get a little bit out of this. If you're going to put in a lot of effort, you're going to get more out of this. This business owes this business owes nobody anything. So if you go in with the the mindset of thinking that you're owed something in in this wrestling business, you're not. And I try to teach that to all my students as well is to put in as much effort as they can if they hope they succeed. I run the the wrestling school, the Buffalo Wrestling Academy. So I I I go over a lot of. Uh, business advice, psychology advice, in-ring advice, things that I feel that could help them succeed in the wrestling business no matter what their goals are. So, like, the, I have a lot of students here at the Buffalo Wrestling Academy. They're all coming along well. They're all putting in great effort to get to where they want to be. So, any – and as I plug my social media at the at the start of the, the show, so anybody that uh, is interested in that type of advice or anybody that has questions like that, they f- can feel free to reach out and ask whatever they feel. You said it's the Buffalo Wrestling Academy? Yes. Okay. What's it uh one more question I guess. What would it what's it like, you know, the difference between being a performer and a coach? It gives you a much new uh respect and appreciation for what we do. So, like I, I try to look at it as I'm not just responsible for myself anymore. I'm responsible for my students and their success. And I'm not just teaching myself to be a better performer. I'm teaching myself to be a better trainer. And I want to give them the opportunities that I may have never had. And I've had a lot of opportunities along the way, but like my trainer's idea of success was he wants a student to be able to surpass them and go further than he did. So I like to have that same idea, same vision. I want these these students to carry out everything that, that I've been taught and carry out everything that I teach them and one day be able to succeed and reach their own idea of success. Okay. I like that. Um, and, uh, like I said, uh, off camera, I appreciate you being on the show, man. Um, sometimes it's hard to get in touch with you guys. So I appreciate you jumping on the podcast and sharing with us today. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, but it's, um, it's nice to be able to get that insight, especially from, from guys like you, um, and others that, might not get their word out as much as you know some would hope and most of the time you guys i feel like are just a little bit more interesting than the guys we see on tv all the time yeah yeah. so thank you once again i really do appreciate it um yeah hopefully we can see you on here again man i appreciate it man thank you all right you have a good one you too